Hi there. Now for this part, we're looking at part B, we've got to find the range of G. And we had two versions for G of X. We were given this and we had to show that it was simplified down to X plus 1 over X minus 2. And the best thing we could do is work with this one. It's a lot simpler, OK? And when it comes to working out the range, I always believe that you should be able to sketch the graph because it will help you. And uh, I don't think that this is any different. So what I'm going to do is set up some axes. We'll put that as the Y axis and we'll have this as the X axis. And what I notice is that, first of all, we've got to look at a domain where X is greater than 3. So I'll just set up 3 as being that point there. And the other thing I notice is that we can't divide by 2 because if x was equal to 2 it would give us 0 in the denominator here and dividing by 0 gives us an undefined result. It could be either going to plus infinity or minus infinity. So we have what's called an asymptote at that point. So I'm going to mark in that asymptote here at x equals 2. It's going to look say something like that. We'll mark in that that is 2. Now that means that the curve, when x tends towards 2, when it's just a value just slightly more than 2, the top here is going to be positive, the denominator here is going to be close to 0, but positive. So it's going to signify that we're going to get a very large value as x approaches 2, a large positive value. So it's going to tend to the asymptote like this. Okay. Now the other thing I want to do is check out what happens for very large values as x is bigger than 3, it's going to tend towards infinity. So looking at that, if we just put here g of x again, g of x we can see then is x plus 1 divided by x minus 2. And if I let x tend to a very large positive value, then you should be able to see that, or one way of looking at this anyway, is that plus 1 and minus 2 from very large values is insignificant. So you're just going to essentially have the same large value over the same large value. So in other words, x over x, which is going to mean it's going to tend to 1. If you're not happy with that technique, there's another way that you could look at this, and that is divide top and bottom by x. And if you do that, you get x divided by x, which is 1, and then you get plus the 1 over x here. And then all of this is divided by x divided by x, which is 1, and then minus 2 divided by x. And if you look at it from this point of view, as x tends to infinity, okay, large numbers, then what happens to g of x is that we get 1 over x, x being a large number, 1 divided by a large number, tends to 0. So you get 1 on the top. So we can see that this tends to 1 on the top divided by, and the same argument here, 2 over a large number tends to 0, so you're just left with 1 in the denominator. 1 over 1 then tends to 1. So that means that we've got an asymptote, and we'll mark that in then across here, where y, if you like, g of x is 1. So if we mark that in something like this, it's not drawn totally to scale, but hopefully it will give you an idea, then we've got this curve coming down, and as x gets larger, this tends to the asymptote y equals 1. Now this point, when x equals 3, if we were to put it into g of x here, we can see that we get 3 out of 1, which is 4, divided by 3 minus 2, which is 1. So you just get 4. So when x is 3, this point here, we end up with g of x being 4. And that means that this value across here is 4. And so we're interested in the range then for x greater than 3. So what we're looking at is all the values 
that y or g of x can take when x is greater than 3. And that is, it can be anything upwards from 1 all the way up to just less than 4. Okay, remember x is not equal to 3. If it did, it would equal 4. But it's going to be any value then from 1 up to the 4. And that's what we've got. I'll just put in here that when x equals 3, just to remind you, g of 3 equaled 4. So therefore, the range is that g of x can be greater than 1 and less than 4 for x greater than 3. And as I say, I hope you can see it from the graph here. And I do stress, I feel it's so important to be able to understand the graph when you're working out range and domain kind of questions. Okay?